I'm sure you've had a busy week like me, but life goes on, and this week we still have college football. So let's talk about some games this week. Two really big games, and let's start in the SEC with Florida, Georgia, or Georgia, Florida. This game is always big, but you might recall a video I made maybe back in August, sometime this summer, about the impact of this game specifically this year on the SEC East because Georgia has been able to control this game for a significant period of time now, back to 2017, I believe. Of course, before that, Florida, yes, had won um, several of these games, but now it's at a point where Florida is the aggressor, once again, like they might have used to be just um, a few years ago. Georgia, on the other hand, has one of the best defenses that perhaps they've ever had, and yet people are wondering if it's going to be well wasted on their offense this year not being able to keep up. So Georgia's focus in the past has been able to be on an SEC championship, playoff berth, and national championship game. But now if they lose this game, where will their focus go to? Florida, on the other hand, has been able to focus on this game because they haven't been able to get past it, which is, yes, a testament to Georgia. But now Florida believes this is the year this is the best opportunity they have to take advantage of this matchup. Florida wants and needs to score points in this game. If they do that, then they want to frame the game similar to how Georgia played Alabama, where once Florida gets ahead, there's no way that Georgia can mount a comeback and score points to try to win the game. If Florida can get ahead by two, three touchdowns, then they should be able to win the game and hold it out simply because Georgia's offense can't keep up at that point. However, if you're a Georgia fan, you want to dominate the game in the trenches and never let it get out of hand. You want to be ball control and stop Florida's offense at all costs, and it goes similar to the Kentucky game, maybe with some more scoring, yes, but controlling and dominating the game to a point where Florida really never has the lead. And Florida has a lot of momentum. You saw the passion and aggressiveness that they had in the game against Missouri. And perhaps they'll need that to win this game. But if that gets out of hand, then perhaps there's nothing you can do to rein it back in. And the top would be blown off and Georgia would be able to win fairly easily. If you can't contain it. But if you can contain it and funnel it through um, and direct it and be disciplined enough to let that play out as you play the game, maybe perhaps like the second half against Missouri, then Florida has a good chance to win the game, even though Georgia is probably favored for a reason and the more talented team. And for this game to decide the SEC East and who will have a crack at most likely Alabama in the SEC Championship game, I'm going to take Florida to win the game. Of course, this is a toss-up 50-50. It will be big either way. Both teams have a great chance of winning, but I will take Florida to win the game for this year, and we'll see how that turns out. The other big game this week is Clemson at Notre Dame. Of course, you all know that Trevor Lawrence is out for this game, and DJ Uyangalale will get the start at Clemson, the highly touted true freshman quarterback that is on the roster at Clemson. He played last week, played a good solid game, and now we'll get to see how he uh, is able to handle the offense and run the offense against another top five team in the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Of course, Notre Dame has a chance to win the ACC this year with the weird 2020 scheduling, um, which makes it a lot of fun and very interesting. Um, but this game, unlike the Florida Georgia game, perhaps may not be as significant this weekend because you could see a rematch later on in the ACC of Clemson and Notre Dame. Now Notre Dame plays a similar style to Georgia. They have ball control offense, a good enough quarterback with Ian Book who can control and direct and uh, dink and dunk the ball to where it needs to go, distribute it how you need to, has good command of the offense which makes for a good quarterback and you can win games with it. Um, but how do you stack up against the big boys such as Clemson? A lot of people, of course, are looking at Notre Dame to try and capitalize by winning this game because Trevor Lawrence is out. 
but I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Um, if they do, and then, of course, later on, Clemson comes back and beats them in the ACC Championship, there will sure be a playoff discussion for both teams, but I would expect the edge to be given to Clemson and kind of given a pass because Trevor Lawrence was out of this game. You can call that a reason or excuse. I'll leave that up to you. But either way, this will probably not be the end of the story because you have to take into account a possible rematch later in the season. With that being said, Notre Dame does have a good chance to win this game. Of course, they are at home. But I'm going to take Clemson to win the game, even though they do have that freshman quarterback. So you can let me know your opinion in the comment section down below, or just wait for the games to prove me wrong on Saturday. Either way, it's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it and look forward to seeing you um, each week later throughout the season. So again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, consider hit hitting the like button if you did enjoy it and subscribing for more in-depth college football content. That's all for me in this video. Until next time, be goody now.